Hello, everyone. I hope you are well. I hope you are taking the, the semester in your stride. Welcome. We are going to have another wonderful time with the philosophy and classics department. This time, you will be focusing on the philosophy section. The content you will be engaging is philosophical questions. And that is part of what we will be engaging in the philosophy section. Okay, so first semester you did some classics. This semester you'll be doing some philosophy and I'll be engaging you. We are doing this because like we all know already, we have a relatively shorter semester, which is not a problem in itself if students have the right frame and they are going to work towards that. So I would want you to engage content as soon as they are sent to you. I keep saying engage because we just don't read philosophy. We engage the course. So you read, you study, you 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 think through them, you reflect, and then you you have responses. So what is philosophy? That would be our first content that will engage. Now I'm sure someone is asking, who is this? <laughs> okay, so the content I have put together will give you all that. You will study this and then hopefully when school resumes sometime this week, on what? You would have several other content, but this is something you can munch on as we get you ready for the semester, okay? If you have this as a background, then you are able to get a clearer understanding, you know, of some of the content that we will be giving you. When I say content, the reading references will make some more sense if you have been given some introductory content. And because of the nature of the course, it's helpful if you rely mostly on what is being given to you authoritatively first okay then you can now engage some other re uh, readings around you know, philosophy is not like english or mathematics or maybe some social studies that you have encountered in your previous studies you see so you would want to be cautious when you are reading content all over the place now the nature of the discipline also would allow everyone to make their own re responses or views about the content known. So if you are just reading, then sometimes you may be reading what someone thinks is the position. Okay, that is one thing you want to be careful about. And so in helping students, you also advise them to stick as much as they can to the content prepared for them. And then as they read, as they study, they, they always read around only to fill in the, you know, the peripheral, uh, excuse me, the skeletal aspect received from the lecture or the instructor. It is very important. Otherwise you might get yourself confused. And then after weeks and weeks of confusion, you then come to clarity. So my name is Dr. Mrs. Nancy Miles Barford MP. When you see the Mrs., then you will see the Barford MP. When you see some publications and you see just Dr. Nancy Miles, then it is still the same me, but then you are dealing with me when I wear my maiden name. Okay. So I put both so that students or uh, colleagues don't get confused about who they are dealing with at what time. Uh, and I'll be taking you to philosophical questions, PHCL 102 for the coming semester. Okay. The topic one, the course outline, the content, everything, we uploaded on Sakai as soon as registrations are complete. But I know some of you might come in late. We have quite a huge number, not worth mentioning here. And so it is helpful if we use these other outlets to get you you know, busy until finally we have a full set. But every content posted anywhere will ultimately be posted on Sakai, our primary uh, 
classroom, if you like, the hotel room. Okay, what is philosophy? Now, <laughs> people will have so many views about what it is, uh, the problems you can have with it. I'm sharing screen, so I want you, if you are not a special student, then you are able to see the screen. Please look at it because I will teach alongside that. My special students will receive some kind of special help from their institution as well. Okay. What is it? What is philosophy? What it is not? What do you need to do it? It's etymology, the main branches, the subfields, the approaches to doing it. Philosophy is done, it is not read. <laughs> when we say we are reading philosophy, it's just a way of speaking. It's an activity, you do it. Then the values and general uses of philosophy. This brief presentation that I do not intend to go beyond a certain number of minutes should help you cover these content that I have projected. And by the end of this presentation, you should be able to have a fair idea of what it means to be doing philosophy and then what philosophical questions are, okay? And then that basically, what should you be ready for, you know, to engage in this course? So you sh you, I'm sure that by now a lot of you would, would know that uh, if you do philosophy, then you become an atheist or atheist. Yeah, it is done by just some elderly people who philosophize. So you are looking for a long beard. Apologies to my bearded friends. You know, gray hair, what have you. That is not true either. Something for which I say difficult. So if it's something for the very wise, then it might suggest that it is abstruse. In other words, difficult to understand. Something for which is abstract, not practical. You know, they are talking about life after death you know, free will, what has it got to do with life today? Now, these are all not true about what we call philosophy. It is not a descriptive study either. So when do we say a study is descriptive, describing what is there, describing, observing facts, and just stating that philosophy is not that at all. That is just about, if you asked me about 30% of what you, is required of the student, their ability to narrate, memorize, you know, uh, gather information. That doesn't pay if you are being examined as a philosopher. Because we believe that like what Google is doing now, Google can give us every information we need. If you just type it in Google, the facts will come. What is there will come, okay? In terms of observation based, so philosophy is not necessarily a description of what is there. So what then is it? Okay. Now on the screen you see, I said it is a discipline. Remember, disciple. It is a discipline that nurtures and improves the natural reason. You see, it nurtures, it takes care of it, then it makes it better. It improves it. It improves what? the natural reasoning skill or ability that each person already has, okay? And exercises, everybody thinks. When it comes to reasoning, then some have improved and some are still improving. Look at it, reasoning, are offering reasons to support the claims you are making, that is reasoning. And that comes when you are exercising your curiosity, the curious ability, wonder. And most importantly, on the screen now, pointing at something, when you are asking questions, not just abstract, irrelevant questions, but questions that aim at responding to problems of existence, questions that aim at making human existence better. So philosophy is a question asking activity rationally done it means you use your your working tool is your mind the thinking faculty that is your work that's your stethoscope that is if you are a, a shoe shine you polish shoes that is your working box if you are a tailor that is your your machine your threading machine what is that it is your 
mind or your brain for this level, it's okay to say that, okay? It's a question asking enterprise, discipline, which employs what? The mind, we work it with our mind to ask fundamental questions. The questions are fundamental. They are not mere questions, but questions that are addressed towards what? The fundamental beliefs, presuppositions, assumptions that society holds, that an institution holds, that people hold. We address our questions to those pillars, the fundamental beliefs, doctrines, assumptions, presuppositions, okay, grounding institutions. So in politics, there are certain fundamental underpinnings, you know, that ground what the person or the institution or the body is doing. If it is in religion, if it is in culture, etc., etc. The philosopher asks such fundamental questions. So it is a discipline that seeks to nurture people, to become great and wise. Now, when you hear wisdom on the screen now, please, wisdom, we are talking about knowledge that is applicable. You are acquiring knowledge that is useful, not just knowing and sitting on your desk, but knowledge that can be used. So when we apply knowledge, it becomes wisdom. And the philosopher is not just looking for knowledge, he's looking for wisdom. Okay, in other words, aims at solving problems of existence. That's what philosophers do. Now, if, if that is good for you, then we are good to go. That should tell you that philosophy is as practical to everyday life as possible. Philosophy is not some abstraction that we have no use for. It is practical. It is practical and it is useful for everyday life. Every philosophical question that is being asked ultimately aims at what? Practice. So when we advance, you will see we'll engage question of knowledge, question of life after death, question of morality, free will determinism. When we are engaging it, we abstract the question from everyday life so that it is detached from your feelings. We can clearly open it out and look at all the perspectives. But when we finish, the response is ultimately to deal with problems of existence. The reason why someone must not be taken and beaten instantly, I'm talking about instant justice now, is because of the philosophical question we raise. Can we be certain about what our senses told us? What we saw, head touched or taste, just because I saw his hand dipped into the soup, I presume that he's a thief and beat him to death? What if it turns out that he was picking a dead fly out of the soup? I saw the secretary lying flat up on the bus at the poolside, both of them in swimsuit. So I conclude, there might, there might be some illicit affair going on. Necessarily? Nope. Not necessarily. It could be, but it could not be. Philosophical questions, when they are being asked, what can we know for certain? Is there life after death? Is man born free? Uh, uh, reality versus appearance. Is what is real the same as what appears to be? When you enter the philosopher's session, engaging, you might think that this seem abstract until you see how practically useful such content is. We want our students to be very abreast with what it means to be philosophizing. It doesn't just remain abstract, but it is meant to respond to problems of existence. And that is very key to Kwame Jechi's view of philosophy. Kwame Jechi is an African thinker read by the University of Ghana, has studied wide, trained also in Harvard, and, and passed away sometime last year as an emeritus professor. And he has contributed immensely towards the discipline. So as we study the Socrates and the Plato's and what have you, we are proud to project the views that have 
an African orientation, you know, the, the views of this great thinker. And he thinks of philosophy as a conceptual response to practical existential problems. Can summarize his view as that. You respond conceptually. Concept means ideas. So you are using your thinking, your reflection, your rational activity, your question asking, critical evaluation to help deal with a certain practical problem of society. That is philosophy. Now, it is a normative study on your screen, point four, you still see it is a normative study. It is a rational activity centered in argument and critical evaluation. When you say it's a normative study, it means we are not just describing what is there. We are prescribing what should be there, what should be. See, we are saying that this shouldn't be. It is wrong to talk back at your supervisor. Should society endorse a indiscriminate killing? When I ask that question, I'm asking a philosophical question. I'm making a prescription, in other words, that this should not be done. But you just don't come saying what should be done and what should not be done. You are supposed to argue. Argue means give grounds, evidence. Not evidence about bringing paper and pen, but present reasons why mm, a view, a position, why we should do free SHS, for example, instead of health, or what, what at all should be seen wrong about sitting under trees to study? Is it just because, what is the reason? You know, because perhaps if we interrogated that, we might have better responses than what we already have, or we might return to the past, either golden or not, okay? so. A normative study means you are not just going around observing and gathering data and coming to present. Far from that, you go around, if you like, the text, the society, the newspaper, what have you, your life, we'll get there in a minute, gather that data. But the real philosophy is when the reflection, when you reflect on it and raise fundamental questions, why should human beings be killed to accompany a dead chief, for example? It's not enough to say, oh, they are, they are a kick. These people, no, 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 ask questions and then prescribe. So I would say that, well, if we need people to accompany an analysis or being to the other world, then I think the best person to do that would be Nanes Ochiame himself or herself. Why? Well, Ochiame is the linguist because he or she should know Nana better. So he should be the one to accompany the dead nana to the other world. You ask that question, make that presuppose. You ask and that's the response. So if you make this suggestion on who should be killed to accompany nana, let's see if that tradition or that belief will live long. <laughs> I think people may have a revision of what they thought is the view. Philosophers ask such questions with a lot of humility, intellectual tact, and rather than being uh, corrective, right? rather than trying to sound as if you know it all, philosophers don't do that. They rather ask to know, even where they are certain about the error or they are correct. They ask it so that the people say it themselves. And so you can do some readings on Socrates, general readings to fill in the gap. Socrates and how he, he would, so the one who say he would accost the learned friends somewhere in the middle and ask, what is piety? What is just justice? Imagine you meeting the chief justice somewhere and asking him, you are the one in ensuring that we have justice. Hmm. So what is justice? And then as he responds, you ask a, a further and better particular kind of question for clarity. And before long, you are leading the great renowned mind okay, into absurdity to show that perhaps there is something we are not getting right with how we are defining justice. And if the criteria for justice is not clear, then how can we have practical applications of it? I will just ask some questions. Did our, did Achimoto school get justice vis-a-vis -vis did our friend 
Tyrone and Kuli. I'm referring to a Ghanaian contest now. That's the only way we can teach. So please help us. If you do not understand the, the relevance of the illustrations, then you read God is a Ghanaian contest. But Tyrone, uh, my Rastafarian friend and the colleague, did they get justice? Did Bonnie, uh, Kapimpolo, uh, did the Kapimpolo get justice? Did she get justice or did, did this, her son get justice? The, when I start asking these questions, I'm not asking everyday questions. I'm asking a philosophical question. What does it mean to administer justice? Leave it at that. Should society pursue rights regardless of the consequences? I am asking a philosophical question. Why? Because I'm addressing the grounds on which social systems are evolved or are, uh, social systems will emerge. We can do same for politics. We can do same for uh, religion. We can do same for others. And depending on how attached or emotionally connected people are to issues, they might want to label the philosophical enterprise as uh, uh, atheistic or overly criticizing, etc., etc. Okay, but philosophy plays some so many useful. No, there's no uh, one. One one should see why, regardless of the discipline you engage in, you you end up either attaining an MPhil or a PhD. An MPhil is a Master of Philosophy, so you may be doing economics or sociology or psychology, but you ultimately will attain a discipline, a, you know, a degree called maybe Master of Philosophy in Psycho. You know, the discipline is psychology, but you are, in, you are getting a degree called a philosophy degree at the master's level. Or even at the PhD, the PhD just means Doctor of Philosophy, Philosophical Doctor, Doctor of Philosophy. Why is it that you are doing a, a law, but you get a PhD in law, uh, in philosophy, pardon me, or you are doing, a, what's the other discipline? <laughs> Excuse me, uh, give me a, a music, but you get a PhD, PhD in music. PhD means a doctor of philosophy, yet in music. That should tell you that as you attain higher height in your academic life, you climb higher into reaching philosophy. We are, we are so better off. We start off into what? Getting wisdom. We start off as philosophy. So if you do a first degree, a second degree, and a third degree in philosophy, then it is a great achievement that we do not take for granted. And the higher you go, you will notice that it is the cooler you become. The higher you attain practical, useful knowledge. That's what wisdom is. Practical, useful knowledge. You see the demeanor, the calmness, because you have seen a wider view of the matter. You are concerned about the various aspects of that matter. And so you do not react like the way the person who only sees a myopic view of that matter would. I could give you some practical instances. Look at her, Kofiana, of blessed memory. He wouldn't change his accent to impress who? His name is Kofi Annan. He will speak as he is. You know, we will, we will get some more examples and instances. We don't want to make this video too long, but just for you to have a fair idea of what you are doing when you say you are doing philosophy. You, you interrogate matters, you ask questions. So on the screen now, we are asking us, what do you need to be a philosopher? We have answered about three of our questions already in very simple, accessible way without sounding all technical. This is level 100 and we will teach and engage as such, okay? So what do you need? You need an inquiring mind. I've said that already, that is all. That's the need up here, see, it's a need. Why? So you can reflect. I've said all of these fundamental presuppositions. You reflect on them, you ask questions. Then you, you let your mind look at all the various aspects of this question. Why am I not doing well in my studies? 
it's because of the online teaching and the online is not helping and then so we ask yourself so suppose we won't be able to change from online there's something i can do would it really be the online that is causing my not studying because at this are, so, are, are doing it and they are doing well so perhaps i have to change how i'm studying perhaps i would have to sleep more during the daytime so i can have some access to free data night. Perhaps I may have to get better storage facility, pen drive, whatever, Google Drive, buy some storage and keep all my recordings there. Would I have, you know, so what you are doing is engaging the problem and trying to find practical responses to it, not brooding over the challenge and impressing yourself that everybody is like you. You are also friends. This online. Before you know it, a class of 1,500 students has a pass. More than 1,350 have passed, and 76 are going to raise it. And then, unfortunately, unfortunately, you find yourself amongst those. God forbid that for you. It is in the mind and how you are engaging the issue. If it wasn't because of my uncle who left us. Our lives would have not been like this. That's fine. But that is gone. You can change it. We will learn what Otega says about that. When we go through the course outline, then we do the course. Otega and his existentialist friends may have their extremes, but they make some very salient, useful, you know, points about man not being like a stone. Human beings are not like stones. The stone can change what it has been made to be. It can lie in this outside there on the ground. The sun will shine on it and rain will fall on it. If you don't move it, it will be there. Human beings are not like that. He says, man does not have a fixed nature. And therefore, you are able, I would say from my Christian perspective, I would say by the help of God, of course, but you are able to make a dramatic change by the choices you make now. So there is nothing like if it hadn't been my uncle who did why, how do you know that I have to reflect? It's this reflection. Calm reflection, asking the basic questions and then responding. Response means to offer alternatives to help respond and deal with what problems of existence. So the word philosophy comes from, I'm sure you know this already. It's a Greek word, the love of wisdom. Philo and Sophia are the etymology. On the screen now, please. Loving wisdom, the love of wisdom. Okay? And I, I always tell students, what you love, you pursue. So sometimes you take the rabbit, then you take the flower to the sister, then she says, no, she wants pizza, then before long you are going with a, a, a teddy bear. <laughs> now, you, you, are, you, are, you, know, you keep pursuing, you follow it. So the philosopher is not just a dormant person sitting and waiting to receive. The, the philosopher pursues useful knowledge. That's what it's about. The philosopher is always looking to apply that which he or she knows. And that's why philosophers will put you on your toes. Real thinkers, real philosophers will ask, why are we doing this? here. I mean, why? The why is meant to bring responses. As you ask the why, then you propose. I've said all of this. So look at how Solomon of the Bible, and let me issue a disclaimer here. I, I am a little bit more conversant with content when we come to religious study. I'm able to refer more to the biblical text. Okay, so bear with me. And then if you do not shame that, then you can always Google the content. I mean, and, and fail at ease. So if you look at the biblical Solomon, look at how he applied wisdom. He used wisdom to determine who the mother of that child is. If you are the mother, then you won't be able, other matters held constant. You can't watch your baby cut into two. <laughs> Simplicity. Regardless, you would rather prefer that someone else takes the child away, but the child stays alive than to watch your child cut into two. So sometimes to determine 
the truth of a matter, you you will try to spill, if you like, the 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 the, the, the beans. Hmm? You will try to do something that will elicit the truth. The man could tell that one of them is telling the lie. So you know, but how do you bring that up to solve the problem? It, he applied wisdom. Hmm. That is what we seek to do. You can provoke people positively to bring the best out of them. Philosophy searches for wisdom. And I've already said wisdom would come when you ask fundamental questions, not just any question. And there we go with Kwame Jechi's view that I already said. Now, there's another point I want to add, even in discussing the etymology of philosophy. Sukhichi is telling you that the unexamined life is not worth living. It means that the, a life that is not continually subjected to examination, you don't ask yourself any question, why am I here? Why is it that every gentleman comes to my week and just leaves? And then when he's leaving, tell me, you don't know how to talk. Why is it that every friend I meet leaves? I'm looking for practical, useful illustrations that you can as associate with as a student. Why is it that I am failing all these courses? Why is it that I started very well, but all of a sudden it looks like this? If you're asking that question, you are able to project or present alternatives that help you, you know, to make some good proof. If you're a church person, why is it that this church can't go beyond a certain number of people? If you are a married couple, why is it that my children are not taking after me? That is if you have a positive quality anyway. Why? 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 So you see that the, the, the word why is integral to any philosophical discourse. Now we can move a bit faster. So just like any discipline, it has branches. Medicine has branches. A pediatrician is not a gynecologist necessarily, even though they are practicing medicine. So in philosophy, we have metaphysics, epistemology, Logic, value theory, and ethics. I go back one step, look on the screen, metaphysics, what is real, what exists, epistemology, what is knowledge, what is the justification of knowledge, logic, what is correct and incorrect reason. So these branches, look at value theory, it has two sub-branches, ethics and aesthetics. The question of ethics is, is dealing with what is good, what is right, is it right to take that which is not yours, now that sounds almost <laughs> moral. But what is good? What do we mean by good? I have entered into the framework of what ethics. These are branches. So when you hear metaphysics, metaphysical questions, it means you're asking questions about what is real, what really exists, what is there. Is there life after death? That's a metaphysical question. You see, is man free? That is a metaphysical question. We are talking about his freedom real, you see? So it's a question of metaphysics. Epistemology is acting about what we know, what we can be setting of. Do we have a justification for our claims of knowledge? You know? So when I'm asking those, we look at Descartes there. For, for metaphysics, we look at Plato, his reality versus appearance, you know, the allegory of the cave and all that. Epistemology engages the question of what? Knowledge. Mm -hmm. Then logic will deal with principles that help us to determine correct and incorrect reasoning. How can you say I wasn't there? But actually, when I was there, I didn't see him. That bachelor beat his wife mercilessly. Bachelors cannot beat their wife because they cannot have wives, let alone beat them. You cannot be making a presentation at court. Then you say, I wasn't there that day. In fact, that woman, I've never seen her in person, not on photo. So I, do, I can't even identify her. But you see, that day when I saw her, she was not wearing her wig. So I couldn't, uh, did you see her? Or oh, you didn't see her? That's a logical challenge. Okay. Value theory, I've said, has two sub-branches, the ethical aspect and then the aesthetics. I jokingly tell people that sometimes, you see a lady head over heels in love with a guy. When you look at a guy's face, I'm talking about aesthetics now. Hello, guys. You are so sad. Ah, 
this fearfully made brother, <laughs> we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Some are so fearfully made more than the wonderful part. You know? And yet the sister is dying over that brother. Why? Because the sister sees beauty. The question of aesthetic, beauty. You go into an art gallery and when you see some scribbled something on some canvas somewhere hanging there and the price, 5,000 Ghana cents. You are amazed. Who is going to buy this? This take 5,000. Actually, I need some 5,000 to pay, please. Get myself some new, you know, laptops. But another person walks into that art gallery and will pay the 5,000 and pay that art piece because he, he or she can see some aesthetic value. So what is beauty? That draftsman who is designing the city, <laughs> what constitutes beauty? What does he or she see as beauty? That is this. Why is it that a certain society will cut down all their trees and build, build high-rise buildings? Because that is what they see to be beautiful. Others will not cut a tree down, will leave that place and say, ah, see the beauty of nature. What is beauty? It's an aesthetic, you know, it's, it's, it's a question of aesthetic value. Okay. So now that you know those main branches, what are some of the sub social and political? They are on the screen. Look at it. You should see this and learn them. Philosophy of law, etc. etc. Now, philosophy is a second order activity, also. You should see it as such. It goes beyond just what it is and enters into other disciplines. So when we say philosophy of history, philosophy of religion, philosophy of culture, philosophy of economics, philosophy of education. It means now we are not just dealing with one discipline, it has gone into some other discipline. So my dear friends, so far, what have we covered? What it is, what it is not, what you need to do it, etc. Now we are entering into approaches, the approach to doing philosophy. Now, take note of this. This sounds a little bit technical, but it is accessible. Philosophy is done either as an analytic concept or a speculative one. Look at the word analytic, analysis. This is how you do it, not its branches, but how it is done. You can do philosophy and the questions you are asking, you know, addresses what, or, uh, or focuses on what, the meaning Okay, the meaning of terms, hmm? analysis of terms or concepts, the clarification of language. So you are seeking for people to clarify what they mean by X or Y. When you are doing that kind of philosophizing, you are asking questions, but the questions are seeking for clarity in the use of language. What do you mean by corruption? What do you mean by life uh, uh, freedom? What does it mean to have free SHS? See, when I ask that question, what is the meaning of SHS? What is social democratic party? What do you mean by that? What is women's consciences? What does it mean to be family as a church? You see, the, the word meaning, seeking clarity of the use of language, analyzing this concept is what makes the, that approach of philosophizing, that approach of question asking, what an analytic approach. Okay, so the analytic thinker focuses on clarification of language, concepts, etc. Now, what is the critique against this approach? Critique means what do people find wrong? Other philosophers find wrong with this approach of doing philosophy. They think that such an approach overemphasizes questions of meaning and underemphasizes questions of truth. You are always interested in what it means to be this. What does it mean to be that? What does it mean to be free? And you are not helping us free the people, actually. Okay, so if you are overly analytic in your philosophical approach, we might think of you as being too logic, 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 logic. All oh, student study. Nancy is a student, therefore, Nancy studies. That is logically valid, modus ponens. Okay, but there are people who study and don't even live. Let's, let's use a very fine example. If you study, then you pass. Or all students who study pass. Nancy studied, therefore Nancy will pass. That is logically valid. Mm -hmm. 
yet <laughs> it might not be so in real life. If the person might study and not even leave to, to, to write the exam, God forbid. So we want analytic thinkers to be very uh, circumspect in their overemphasis of language to the detriment of actuality, content, truth, okay? That, that, that takes us to the second approach of doing philosophy, which is the speculative approach. You look at the word speculative. Now, this one would rather focus more on the question of truth. And you see that it drifts a bit more towards metaphysics or the question of reality, if you like. Is there life after death? What is the highest good that we must pursue? What is the highest good a society must pursue? Should society pursue right or wrong? Hmm? Excuse me. Should society pursue, uh, uh, um, I got a bit distracted, forgive me. Should society pursue, should society pursue uh, um, um, integrity over daily bread? Or society is better off pursuing uh, uh, altruistic act. Mm -hmm. On the screen, I'll put some nice examples there. Is a lie ever right? Mm -hmm. The correct, what is the correct standard of morality? Yes, that everything. What is the correct standard of morality? Okay, etc. Should I pursue an act because of its consequences or because of the good it produces? Mm -hmm. Is an action right in itself or it is right because of its consequence. All these are questions. You speculate about them. You reason around them. You don't have any particular answer to them. You reason around them, okay? So if you do that, then we say you are doing speculative philosophy. And that one does not focus on language and its use per se. Now the critique with that approach of doing philosophy is that it is non-sensed. You can sense it. You can use your five senses, seeing, hearing, touching, tasting, smelling, to ascertain the truth or falsity of such, you know, uh, claims of truth. Therefore, we say it, it deals with uh, questions that may not oftentimes have direct responses, okay? So speculative approach, analytic approach. Uh, there's the existential approach also, but you can merge it under one of them. So I wouldn't want to uh, drag it a bit more in this introductory uh, presentation. So a working definition should help. Philosophy is a critical analysis of fundamental concepts and a normative discussion of how human thoughts in action or to function, as well as the description of the nature of reality. Hmm? Take note of the highlighted words. Philosophy is a critical analysis. You don't put your, pers your personality in it, your religious beliefs. I'm an about a very religious Christian, hmm? whatever you mean by religion, but an unashamedly Christian. I don't feel worried at all presenting myself as such. But I could interrogate Christian beliefs, uh, posturing, uh, practices without fear or favor, because it is a philosophical discipline. You know, it is that is how you have been trained to do. Just like a medical doctor should be able to look at a heart and cut it open and operate, or a lung, a lung or something, without feeling anything. It's a training. Not that, the, that that person is trained to kill, but is able to cut off a weak, you know, someone whose arm is, is dead and therefore has to be cut off. It's human beings that cut it. It's a training. So the philosopher should be able to critically. Critically means you do not put yourself into it. Hey, why is it that you're talking about? You're asking that God exists. Hey, that person, if you ask it, it means you're a demon from hell. Who told you that? Why hasn't God killed the person? should be able to engage matters critically without putting yourself into it. Okay, you are a, a chief justice, you should be able to 
look into the or a justice of a Supreme Court or a high court somewhere, to be able to look into the face of someone and say, I respect you very much, but this is your case there. I throw it out of court. It is nothing personal. It's a discipline. It's a training. It's a training that you, you, you do. So a critical analysis of what? Fundamental concept, a normative discussion of how human thought and action ought to function. I've explained all these things, fundamental, the grounds, normative, how things should be done, the norm, not descriptive, how things are done. We have two slides to go. Now, Jechi's view I already mentioned, that is what I've projected here. He thinks that if it is philosophy is a conceptual response to practical and existential problems. We will see some fine examples of, of that in his text that I will refer you to. When, when you go to Sakai later on, you will see the readings there. Or if, if it comes in earlier enough, then I'll post here for you to see. So what is the value of philosophy? I'll just put all on the screen. It nurtures critical and evaluative abilities in its students, mm -hmm. gives you an understanding and appreciation of the ideas, values, and institutions of human society. Yes, you will see why the people behave the way they do. So then if you are able to prescribe an alternative, you can help. If not, then you will understand and live peaceably with all men. It helps you li get liberated from prejudice. How? By challenging traditions, beliefs, and norms to a well-reasoned, matured faith, for instance. There are things you won't do again. There are this is a church, churches right? like religious groups that would in the past say, before you pray, cover your head. Well, yes, but if I'm in a car, and the car is going to fall into a ditch, and my handbag is down there, and the, I have to look for my scarf in my bag before I pray, that can be. Do not wear uh, men's clothing or something. So if I'm in Iceland and I'm a woman, what right and so on. So there are certain questions you can ask that help to refine, if you like, or not necessarily refine, that might sound derogatory, but to have a review of what you thought you knew. And that's what philosophy does, helps you to get liberated from prejudice. Okay. It makes you less susceptible to gallibility. Everything that is passing is wrong. Oh, I saw the notice here. Hey, these people, they are like this. The policy, oh, these people who come from here. And they, they, no, you are not that gallible. When you're a philosophically inclined person, always asking fundamental questions. It develops the capacity to see the world from the perspective of other persons and other cultures. That doesn't mean you necessarily adopt their perspective, but it helps you see the world from their perspective, why they see things the way they see. I think that there's a lot going on recently in world politics, Palestine and uh, you know the Jews and the Palestinians. And without sounding, when you look at the grounds for the disagreement, you know that it is not just a matter of uh, 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 people who don't have any uh, regard for peace, but right? it's there's a fundamental belief assumption, be it religious, be it political, all intertwined. We to address it if it can be addressed at all. We need more than just uh, political drinks over a cup of coffee. All right. Now, general uses of philosophy. You adopt. You 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 become a problem solver because you understand how people are thinking, the basis, the grounds for what they are thinking, how they are thinking. And so you are able to deal with the issue from there. You are able to propose responses that address the foundation. Because the foundation is weak, what can you build on it? In other words, if you do not know why and what the presuppositions are, that grounds the way people behave, then you won't be able to propose any, or it goes from the boss in the, in the banking hall, who, who would always come, for example, and rebuke the late you know, worker. The worker is late, he's late. But the worker is very diligent at the office. That he is always late. If you're a problem solver, you should see that there is a problem. It's not that the, the worker wants to be late. So 
how can you deal with it? Do you need to get this person a car loan? Do we need to get a bus for these workers that come late? Rather than always, hey, you are late and you are not a serious worker and I don't have that, that. You can't sack the person to you. You need the person. What can you do? The woman is pregnant. Women get pregnant and they give birth. If they don't, society will frown at them that they are only seeking degrees. So what can you do? See, managerial skills. This is wanted by every employer. So when people ask, if I do philosophy, what can I do in future? Or if I do classics, what work can I do? Not only can you create more jobs, you are able to help people rethink how they are thinking. And so what? And so you are able to fit everywhere, everywhere from politics to law, to academia, to uh, industry. Why will you invest something? You see the questions are like vertical questions. You are a consultant to many pharmaceutical industries and advertiser needs your view because a philosopher is able to interpret how people behave. Why people do the things they do, and so it's able to help you bring out, you know, items that fit that need. So I am even more interested in how philosophers are able to create mm, by how you saw if you're a problem solver, then you're able to create responses which cuts across all disciplines. You are a good communicator. You have persuasive powers. Those religious folks are amongst you. You're able to convince people to join your, your sect. Mm, I speak that way. You're able to evangelize better because you know what to touch on, how to argue convincingly, give reason, not just force people. So you won't come and believe in Christ, say, you will die and go to hell. You are going to hell. That, that doesn't do anything. It's rather generates rebellion. Think about it, right? You have a political party, you want people to join you. you want someone to stop being a social democrat and join uh, which other party? You convince by arguing, presenting argument, not not emotions, okay? A rational thinker you can resolve family issues to society, to a uh, cultural groups, ethnic groups, whatever, a fight, you can bring them to the table. Some, some people are going to do coup d'etat. You need a philosopher, you need a thinker, a reflector who can engage. So persuasive powers, writing skills, how your ideas are organized. The person is going to present the state of the nation's address. Hmm? The ideas must be organized. You want a marketer? Look for a philosopher. Okay. Because you're able to fish out matters and present it. Then you can do very sound research and analysis. Now we end with this. Look at this, person one. We are trying to identify the philosophical issue the first person says, widespread use of pesticides and additives in the production of food has serious and damaging effects on the human body. The second person says, the increased instances of cancer in modern society are directly related to the expanded use of chemicals. That's the second person. You got the third person and fourth person. You can always go back to the video. The government has a responsibility to ban such agents from foods, since all persons are obligated to preserve life. This person is not describing, you know, look at person four. I think the highest good, and I'm highlighting responsibility, obligated, the highest good is not the preservation of life. The government has no obligation to its people, except non-interference in their private affairs. Now look at person three and four. You notice that persons three and four are not just stating observation. No, fact. They are not just stating fact, what they have seen. They are prescribing, not just describing. They are prescribing what should be, what ought to be the case. Not just what is the case. I read person three again. The government has a responsibility to ban such agents from food, things that are corrupting our food. You can put galamsey there. The government has a responsibility to ban galamsey since all persons are obligated to preserve life. 
this is a philosophical statement. The, the person speaking is dealing with the issue philosophically. He says it is government's responsibility. It is government that should do so and so and so and so and so. Since there comes the reason, since all persons have an obligation, it is a duty. We are obliged to preserve life. So it is not a description. People don't take care of the other people. Oh, Ghana, right now, the idea, the way we are wasting what time, that is not philosophical. The philosopher is prescribing based on what? Evidence of it. Okay, look at the person four too. I think the highest good is not the preservation of life. This is the, this person is reacting to person three. It's also sounding philosophical. I say, oh, what is really good, the highest thing we should pursue is not a preservation of life. Now listen, it, it continues. The government has no obligation to its people except what non-interference in their private affairs. This sounds like a very libertarian thing. You will understand that in over 300. Liberty, liberty, me, myself, and I kind of thing. You say government must not interfere in anybody's life. If people have money and they can do galamsy, they should be let, let free to do that. This person is also speaking philosophy. In other words, this person is also thinking that if you say government should come and interfere in how people are running their business before long, we will not have any private enterprise. People will not even go and do anything for government to come and determine how you should sell bread that you are baked. So now person three and four are engaging in philosophical argumentation, all aimed at what? Solving the problem of what? Food corruption, agents that have been put in food, like fertilizer that has been put in food but they are engaging with the aim of what? Responding to that problem. If you refer to the previous slide, however, you won't see that. The previous two people are just gathering data. Person one, widespread use of pesticides and additives in the production of food has serious and damaging effects on the human body. This is not a philosophical statement. Nothing is describing what is there, which is also good in its own right for that discipline, but not for philosophy. We don't just go around telling what is there. A lot of people are now doing galam say, oh, Ghana. There's nothing philosophical about that. Google can tell us that. Join News will tell us that. Oman FM will tell us that in the morning. So nothing much has been done. But when I look at the second person, the increased instances of cancer in modern society are directly related to the expanded use of chemicals. We have heard you, but that's a fact. Observation based. Anybody seeing, hearing, touching, tasting, smelling can say this. Which one deals with problem solving? There it comes, person three. The government has a responsibility to ban such agents from food. So this person lays it at the door, door, door post, uh, the what, doorstep of what? Government. It says, government, you should stop those who are doing that. Because every person has an obligation to preserve life. It is your duty to preserve life. Then the other person says, I don't think that that is the highest good of my dear brother. I think government should rather not interfere in anybody's life. So now there's reason to start a philosophical debate engagement to make better alternative that works for all of us. That is a philosophical issue. That will elicit philosophical questions. So one person might say, well, what is the highest good then? Someone will say, what do you mean by obligation? Can you clarify? There comes the analytic approach, then the speculative approach, and whatever. All in the aim of what? Helping us determine whether we pursue health first before education, or we think no, but the education must precede health, or should we do, uh, as a church, should we do the building first for the people, or maybe no, we should engage in the people, and when the people are well-placed, then we can have more to improve the building or no. When we have a good building, then we can get good people as well. Philosophy, the discipline of philosophy, always seeks to help respond to practical existential problems, according to Kwame Chechi. Look out for the course outline, look out for other content, and then when school officially sets up, will have a kind of a marathon for all your various lectures, but you will do fine if you put your mind to, to it.
I wish you well. Have a wonderful, blessed, fruitful, prayerful week. Take care.